Suddenly, the phone rang. Only six people in the world knew this number. Without hesitation, he pressed the button and answered, Who is it? Let me warn you not to investigate this number. Upon hearing this voice, he shivered, his breath becoming rapid. The person on the other end continued speaking. If I find out you're arranging people around me, I will destroy everything I'm granted you, including your life. Find me someone named Sun Jai, the CEO of Thain, my corporation. Last contact was 10 hours ago. I need to know where she is now, any potential danger, and what's happening with her family. Within five minutes, I want to know everything. Jang Nan Wang held the phone in his hand, a device he had possessed for three years. Day and night, he patiently awaited the call from the man he referred to as the master of communication. Today, his wish had finally come true, and a smile appeared on his face. He called this person the communication master. Five crucial minutes passed. Have you liked the video yet? Yi Cheng obtained the information he sought. At 11.35, Sun Jai left her house in a car with the license plate 180TS, heading to the People's Hospital in Wujiang City. The car is still at the hospital. According to the investigation, Sun Jai's sister fell ill at 11.28 and is currently undergoing emergency treatment, requiring immediate surgery. The surgical cost is 700000 During this time, Sun Jai contacted three people, one from the car pawn shop, palming the car for 50000 I have more detailed information. Do you want me to send it to you? Not necessary. Yi Cheng unconsciously nodded and hung up the phone. Certainly, something has happened, but knowing her whereabouts makes it easier to handle. The next morning, at the People's Hospital in Wujiang City, I've withdrawn all my savings and sold the car. Only got 300000 to cover the surgery costs for Hao. Are there any other options for us? Sun Jai's parents were also out of options. Our family has exhausted all funds, and we can only rely on your uncle's family. I've already called him. Indeed, Sun Jai was reluctant to rely on her uncle. Uncle too is the wealthiest in the family, but he always looks down on our family. Shortly after, Sun Jai saw Uncle Tu and his wife arriving. From a distance, they heard the remark. With Sun Hao in such trouble, why did you only come to us now? Sun Jai smiled bitterly. Uncle Tu, Aunt Tu, thank you for your help. Sun Rong Fu is Sun Jai's uncle too, and he looked at Sun Jai with admiration. Truly beautiful. I never expected his brother to have such a beautiful daughter. If she marries into a wealthy family in the future, the fate of the Sun family will change. Sun Jai's father spoke up. Rong Fu, you know our family is really struggling. We will pay you back later. If we can sell the house, I understand, but it's regrettable. If this had happened earlier, it would have been better. Right now, our business is declining, and we don't have any extra money. Sun Rong Fu pondered deeply. He knew Sun Jai's family was very poor, and they might not be able to repay this amount of money, and he didn't want it to go to waste. Just hearing that, tears welled up in Sun Jai's eyes as she pleaded. But Uncle Tu... If we don't proceed with the surgery, Sun Hao's life will be in danger. At this moment, Sun Rong Fu's wife interjected, Husband, do you recall what you mentioned to Mr. Lai during dinner? Didn't you jokingly say you'd introduce someone to his foolish son? Sun Jai is so beautiful. This marriage is sure to happen. By then, you won't have to worry about Mr. Lai promoting him. Sun Rong Fu's eyes sparkled with admiration. My wife is always clever. Why didn't I think of this? Although his son is a fool, Mr. Lai is a lecher, and Sun Jai is undoubtedly a suitable match. Does Sun Jai already have a boyfriend? Sun Jai blushed and remained silent, only shaking her head. She understood their malicious intentions, but at the moment, she genuinely did not have a boyfriend. Trying to lighten the mood, she said with a forced smile, Well, that's great. Although Uncle Tu's business is not going smoothly, Sun Hao's life is the most important, and there's a way to get the money for the treatment. Sun Jai lowered her head and inquired, What does Aunt Tu mean? I heard that Mr. Li's son is currently seeking a wife. If I marry into the Li family, it's not just about curing my younger brother's illness. The future of our family will rely on me. Upon hearing this, Sun Rong Gu couldn't be oblivious to the intentions of the other party. This is like selling his own daughter. Sun Rong Gai stood up directly, refusing to accept. The matter of Sun Jai's marriage, please don't concern yourselves. Our family will find a solution for Sun Jai on our own. Dong Hai Zhao issued a threat. Wrong guy, and you too, Sun Jai. 
If you don't think for yourselves, at least consider a bit for Sun Hao. If you don't contribute enough money, it will be difficult for him to survive. Sun Hao is just leaving like this. He's only 14 years old, and the future ahead is still very long. As these words were spoken, Sun Jai and Sun Rong Gai showed a slight wavering, with eyes filled with despair. Dong Haiju knew this was an opportunity, so he continued, Sun Jai, you don't have a boyfriend anyway. Even if the person is foolish and doesn't understand anything, marrying into the Lei family means the money won't be yours entirely. Marrying into a wealthy family is a good thing. Your family will never lack money again. You should consider it for the sake of curing Sun Hao. It requires a lot of money. Suddenly, a voice echoed from a distance. Who wants my girlfriend to get married? Hearing the familiar voice, Sun Jai raised her head and saw Yi Chang approaching not far away. Yi Chang smiled confidently and walked towards Sun Jai, saying, Silly girl, why did you hide your brother's illness from me? That's unfair to me. The current situation left everyone there astonished, with people expressing their surprise. Your Sun Jai's boyfriend? Why haven't I heard the girl mention anything about this? Yi Cheng, with a cheerful smile, draped his arm around Sun Jai and said, Well, auntie, you know Sun Jai is quite shy. Sun Jai, beside him, became even more embarrassed, and the angry couple of Uncle Tu dropped the food they were holding, questioning Yi Cheng. Nonsense. Sun Jai said she doesn't have a boyfriend. Where did you come from claiming to be her boyfriend? No one believes you. Why don't you prove it to us? At this point, Yi Cheng looked at Sun Jai, smiled, and pointed to his face. See, she doesn't believe it. Why don't we prove it to her? Sun Jai never expected that Yi Cheng would boldly declare himself as her boyfriend right in front of everyone. However, she understood that Yi Cheng was trying to help her get out of trouble. Sun Jai closed her eyes and gave Yi Cheng a kiss, leaving everyone perplexed with this unexpected display. I thought they were just normal friends, but he really is Sun Jai's boyfriend. This is way too audacious. Sun Ron Fu regained his composure and said, Sun Jai, you must understand that the surgery cost is a considerable amount, and not every man can afford it. Yi Cheng stepped forward. I have already fully paid Sun Hao's hospital fees. That amount is just a drop in the ocean for me. The couple, Sun Ron Fu and his wife, continued their interrogation. You have 400,000. That's really hard to believe. If you've paid the hospital fees, where's the invoice? Yi Cheng was also surprised that these two paid attention to such details. Due to the urgency, Yi Cheng hadn't actually paid the hospital fees yet. He played it cool, giving a nonchalant smile. The money was indeed not paid to the hospital, but to Yi Cheng Ai, the top doctor in Jiancheng. He will treat Sun Hao. Yi Cheng Ai, where did I come from to Jiancheng? I'd never heard of him. Yi Cheng Ai is not who you're talking about. Yi Cheng also admired the woman. She was not easily deceived. Yi Cheng confirmed. Yes, Yi Cheng Ai is indeed me. The two spouses, Sun Rong Fu, took turns mocking Yi Cheng. If you were a divine doctor, then I must be a living god. Ha ha ha, laughing to death. A divine doctor, really? At this moment, a doctor was approaching them. And from a distance, he said, Relatives of the patient, please keep quiet. This is a hospital. Sun Rong Fu looked in that direction and suddenly recognized the doctor as Dr. Cao. He hurriedly ran up to Dr. Cao. Dr. Cao, it's been a long time. Do you remember me? I'm Sun Rong Fu. We had dinner together last time. Now Dr. Cao glanced over. His eyes suddenly sparked with excitement. He pushed Sun Rong Fu aside and rushed towards Yi Chang. Standing in front of Yi Chang, Dr. Cao, overwhelmed, grabbed Yi Chang's hands and, in a flattering tone, said, Yi Cheng Wai, unexpectedly meeting you here, little Ka. Last time we met, you really broadened my horizons. As these words fell, everyone present was bewildered. The three words, Yi Cheng Wai, echoed in their minds. But Yi Cheng, at this moment, appeared absent-minded, saying, Oh, who's that? What's going on? Hello, how we met somewhere? This statement left Dr. Kill, momentarily stunned, I am Dr. Cao. We met before at Shen Hai Hua's house. Now Yi Cheng recalled, and Sun Jai's parents were still in shock, their eyes wide open. He really is a doctor. Why didn't Sun Jai tell us before? Yi Cheng caught up with the situation. So, you are not lying about your medical expertise. 
I used to think you were just a swindler, preying on the wealthy. Sun Rong Fu still voiced his dissatisfaction. Dr. Cao, can this poor fellow be considered a divine doctor? He seems more like a swindler who specializes in deceiving the rich. Dr. Kao glanced at Sun Rong Fu and then asked Yi Chang, Mr. Gi, who is this person? Just a noisy stranger. With a wave of his hand, Dr. Kao summoned two security guards who apprehended Sun Rong Fu and his wife, saying, These two are causing a disturbance, affecting other patients. I suspect they may be infected with the rabies virus. To limit the spread of the virus, I suggest these two patients should be humanely isolated immediately. So they were taken away, looking quite pitiful. Yi Chang draped his arm over Dr. Kao and whispered, Your medical skills may be ordinary, but your tactics are rather ruthless, enough to make Yi Chang sneer. They shouldn't have crossed paths with Yi Chang. He gently pulled Sun Jai along, holding hands with Yi Chang. Can you speak up for us? We'll definitely gather enough money for the surgery. Dr. Kao overheard this. So, Sun Hao is Yi Chang's girlfriend's brother. Sensing an opportunity to win Yi Chang's favor, he gave a thumbs up, prepare for Sun Hao's surgery. In the next hour, I'll take charge of this operation, as the chief surgeon, of course. Then, Dr. Kao turned to Yi Chang. Mr. Yi, leave this matter to me. Sun Jai also expressed her gratitude to Dr. Kao. Yi Chang, with some concerns, pulled Dr. Kao aside. Performing surgery on Sun Hao, can you guarantee a complete recovery with your approach? Mr. D need not worry. I can handle the surgery myself, and there won't be any issues. Preferring not to owe others too much, Yi Chang took out a piece of paper while speaking. Here's an acupuncture technique for beginners. It can greatly enhance your medical skills. Dr. Kyo glanced over the paper and was startled. This is the ancient art of blood acupuncture. Under his guidance, your medical skills will progress significantly. As for the surgical expenses, I will cover them. Dr. Kao added, Mr. Yi, I'll take full responsibility for all surgical costs. At this moment, the three members of Sun Jai's family expressed joy and amazement. Sun Hao's surgical expenses are resolved so easily. We're curious about Sun Jai's boyfriend. In the evening, Sun Jai, go home first. If there's any issue, your parents will call you. By the way, your dad has something to discuss with you. Sun Rong Gai whispered to Sun Jai, although you and Yi Chang are in a relationship, living together would be inconvenient. Before getting married, you must take necessary precautions when dealing with such matters. Now pay attention, everyone. Sun Jai, feeling embarrassed and angry, exclaimed loudly, Dad, what nonsense are you talking about? Ha ha ha, I can't believe you have such a mindset. Sun Jai scolded. How could you eavesdrop on others' conversations like that? Forget it. Don't say anything more. Let's take the car and go home. At this moment, Sun Jai suddenly remembered and turned back to tell Yi Chen, I lost my car. Maybe I'll take a day off tomorrow to redeem it. Yi Cheng took out the car keys from his pocket, saying, You can go home with my car. Is that okay? Sun Jai realized it was her car key and asked, How did you get it? When I coincidentally saw a pawn shop towing the car, as your temporary girlfriend, of course I had to reclaim it. Next time, be careful not to lose it. Unable to contain herself, Sun Jai ran back and hugged Yi Chang, saying, Thank you. In fact, I'm the one who should be grateful. The two got on the car together, and the atmosphere in the car was somewhat quiet. Suddenly, Sun Jai spoke up, Yi Chang, I'm very curious why you helped me. Is it because I helped you at the Thai in my corporation? or because I let you into my house. Yi Chang paused for a moment and said, Maybe you'll find out tomorrow. Sun Jai was a bit impatient, saying, What are you trying to do tomorrow? Ha 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 ha. Just be patient a bit. While talking, Sun Jai noticed that the temperature in the car was dropping. Yi Chang, I feel very cold. It seems like the air conditioning in the car is broken. Yi Chang's eyebrows furrowed, sharp eyes sensing a presence of danger. He said to Sun Jai, don't ask why. You must listen carefully to every word I say next. Despite the car still moving, Yi Chang opened the car door, startling Sun Jai. He continued speaking. First, as soon as I get out of the car, you immediately run at full speed to the apartment and never stop. Remember that no matter what sound you hear or see, don't stop or turn back. Second, after you get home, take my phone and hide in my room. Third, in the call log on my phone. 
Call the closest contact after connecting a call. Tell them within 30 minutes. Send the strongest person to your house. If someone breaks in after 30 minutes, don't resist. Surrender obediently. I will come to save you. The incident unfolded in the blink of an eye, and Yi Chang swiftly leaped out of the car. Yi Chang thought to himself, the battles of martial arts experts are simply intolerable for ordinary people. She will be more dangerous by my side. It seems that fighting alone is not enough. Having my own forces would be more advantageous. A few seconds later, a car stopped in front of Yi Chang. A young man in a suit stepped out of the car. For Yi Chang, this person couldn't pose any danger to him. Yi Chang focused on the person behind, a middle-aged man exuding the air of a grandmaster. The middle-aged man spoke, Yi Chang, this title has been around for a long time, five years in a row. Indeed, the remnants of the Yi family are still alive. Yi Chang's eyes narrowed. The leader looking at the middle-aged man said, I guess it's not wrong. Five years ago, the incident happened at Van Ho Mountain Villa, and you were present. Are you here today to kill me? The middle-aged man burst into laughter, the sound echoing, Ha 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 ha, kill you. You're just a trash that should be discarded. Why should I bother to do it myself? You overestimate yourself. At this moment, the man in the suit spoke, Mr. Miel, let me handle him. The old man nodded slightly in agreement. The man in the suit turned towards Yi Chang and approached gracefully, but his speed was not slow. With eyes full of malice and an aura covering his entire body, he lunged towards Yi Chang, unleashing a powerful attack, saying, Young man, I will give you a quick death. Yi Chang's eyes were as cold as ice. He lifted one foot to block the attack effortlessly and, in a split second, remarked, You're really weak. Yi Chang threw a punch at the driver's head, instantly killing him. The middle-aged old man looked at the lifeless body of his subordinate, angrily saying, Worthless scum begged for a chance, yet couldn't even withstand a single strike. At this moment, Yi Chang's body was enveloped in a murderous aura. Bloodlust coiling around him like hellfire, the middle-aged man's expression slightly changed in horror. Bloodlust, I didn't expect you to gather it. Young man, cultivating for years, you've achieved remarkable results. Allowing you to grow will be very dangerous. Today, I must kill you. He laughed coldly, disdainful of Yi Chang's strength, saying loudly, Five years ago, it was I who sent someone to kill your entire family. Your subordinate was killed by you in a single move proving your skills. That's all you want to say, right? In the end, whatever I want, I will make you my dog because you killed him. Today, you will have to take his place. Hearing this, Yi Chang chuckled coldly. You overestimated yourself, relying solely on your three-legged cat martial arts. A hint of fear suddenly appeared in the old man's eyes. Around Yi Chang, a myriad of spiritual energies converged into the shape of demons, with sharp teeth and claws. Yi Chang asked coldly, Since when did you imagine that I am weaker than you? Yi Chang questioned with a chilling tone as the old man stared at him intensely, a trace of fear on his face. Could it be that this kid has reached the realm of a master? It's impossible. Don't think you can die as easily as that guy. Yi Chang's face was now extremely cold. The middle-aged man, at this moment, felt a terrifying internal turmoil. I have spent forty years cultivating with countless resources, just stepping into the realm of masters. His body trembled, shouting loudly, don't be complacent. Even if I don't know what dark arts you're using, and you've reached this level in just a few years, the gap in experience cannot be compensated. The middle-aged man took a step forward, the ground showing dense, his body resembling a hunting leopard, charging towards Yi Chang. His attacks turned into a continuous onslaught. Today, Mio Jin Gu will take your head. Yi Cheng's eyes were icy, his arms circulating bursts of vital energy, every strike leaving scratches with traces of blood on Yi Cheng's hands. Mio Jin Gu stepped back slightly, laughing coldly. Not bad, you can block all my assassin's moves, but how long can your hands endure? You're indeed stronger than I thought, causing a little scratch on my skin. I underestimated you, but can you scratch my hands a few more times? Mio Jin Gu seemed to sense something. Looking down at his own hand, his face drastically changing as his fingers were broken. Yi Chang sneered, saying, What is called distance, what is called experience, all are meaningless. Today, I will show you the true extent of my power. At this moment, 
Yi Chang's body was infused with a fierce aura, and spirits howled around him as he soared into the air, charging towards Mio Jin Gu. Seeing Yi Chang leap into the air, Mio Jin Gu's mouth curled into a visible smirk. How dare you attack me from above? Consider it my victory. You're still too young. In the air, you cannot dodge my attacks. I only need to focus all my strength on this move. Mio Jin Gu concentrating all of his fierce energy into his hands, unleashing a technique to sever both of Yi Chang's legs. Ha 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 ha, young man, your legs are broken. Let's see how you fight against me now. Feeling triumphant, his face froze as the image of Yi Chang in the air dissipated, an illusion created by Yi Chang by condensing evil spirits. This realm was beyond Mio Jin Gu's imagination. Now, Yi Chang appeared above him. With a single strike, Mio Jin Gu collapsed to the ground, blood dripping from his mouth, utterly defeated and weakened. Yi Chang sighed, his cold eyes glancing over Mio Jin Gu. You are indeed a master. Your head is quite resilient. You know, the game has only just begun. Mio Jin Gu heard the sound and struggled to lift his head, blurry eyes muttering. It can't be. This is impossible. Yi Chang approached slowly, reaching out to grasp Mio Jin Gu's head and lifting it up. I'll give you a chance. Answer my questions, and I'll consider sparing your life. Firstly, how did you learn about my existence? And how many people know about it now? Mio Jin Gu hesitated and asked, If I answer, will you really let me go? Yi Cheng's expression turned unpleasant, pressing Mio Jin Gu's head down onto the ground. Do you still think you can negotiate with me now? Mio Jin Gu, filled with fear, reluctantly complied. A few days ago, I saw someone searching for information about you through web data, which piqued my curiosity. So I misused the search for videos and images related to you through that data stream. After comparing, the similarity between you and the missing Yi Cheng was extremely high. That's why I came looking for you. As Long Jia mentioned that anyone from the Yi family is not allowed to exist. The person known as Long Jia took everything from me. Yi Cheng placed one foot on Mio Jin Gu, demanding, what is Long Jia's real name? Where is he? And does he know about my existence? Mio Jin Gu bitterly chuckled. I'm just a small character, so I don't know Long Jia's real name. But I know that in the entire martial world, as well as the noble families in the capital, everyone reveres Long Jia as Master Long. Your existence, even if I wanted to inform him, is an opportunity I don't have because I don't know where he is. You don't have the right to face Long Jia directly. Yes, that's correct. Yi Cheng, seeking more information, continued. Why did Long Jia annihilate our Yi family? Was it because my father offended him? I only recall that Long Jia was searching for something, and according to the information I obtained, that something was within the Yi family. At this moment, Yi Cheng pondered. Something. Could it be the stone my father gave me? If that something is within the Yi family and can attract his attention, it must be the reincarnation cemetery inside the stone. While Yi Cheng was lost in thought, a phone in Mio Jin Gu's pocket suddenly rang. Upon seeing this phone call, Mio Jin Gu suddenly changed his attitude toward Yi Cheng, his gloomy tone turning into a sinister chuckle. He said, Kid, do you have the guts to kill me now? I've sent someone to your girlfriend's house. If anything happens to me, you won't see her face again. If you want your girlfriend to stay alive. Before he could finish, Yi Cheng's cold voice cut him off. I already told you. Do you have the right to negotiate with me or not? Yi Cheng forcefully kicked him. Meanwhile, in the large urban apartment complex, Sun Jai's car was speeding towards its destination. As soon as she arrived at the complex, Sun Jai immediately got out of the car and ran quickly to her apartment. She felt a constant sense of unease, as if someone was following her. After entering her apartment and ensuring there were no strangers inside, Sun Jai went straight to Yi Chang's room. Despite not understanding why Yi Chang asked her to do so, Sun Jai dialed the closest contact number on her phone. Outside the apartment building, a group of people in suits, wearing demon masks, appeared. One of them spoke. Mr. Mio insisted on capturing her, whether alive or dead, without leaving any witnesses. Hurry up! Sun Jai was making a phone call in her room, anxiously asking, Hello, is anyone there? The other end of the line rang, and someone picked up. Sun Jai hurriedly spoke. I'm Sun Jai, in apartment 1003 of the Jiangsheng Grand Complex. 
Yi Chang told me to ask you to send the strongest person here within half an hour. Please hurry. At this moment, there was a sound of a door lock being opened from outside. The voice on the other end of the line only said one word before hanging up. Sun Jai felt extremely frightened, wondering, why did they hang up so quickly? Could this call be reported to the police? Meanwhile, at the Team Long Tower, Jang Man Wang's face turned furious. He didn't know whose voice was on the phone, but that was irrelevant. All he needed to know was that whoever dared to harm the Electric Lord was an enemy of Jiang Man Wang. He shouted, Who's there? Immediately, two masked individuals appeared before him. Jiang Man Wang commanded, Issued the order, Head to Jiang Cheng immediately. If anything happens to that woman, bring their heads to me. The two individuals hastily left to carry out the order. After delegating the task to his subordinates, Jiang Man Wang still felt uneasy. He immediately ordered a helicopter to take him to Jiangcheng. The subordinate hastily explained, My lord, tomorrow is the final negotiation with the six major clans, and this matter is related to the overall situation in Jiangyan province. Yi Ling Tan sneered, slamming his hand on the table. Tell them I won't attend. If they are dissatisfied, come to the Tame Long Tower and find Yi Ling Tian. Meanwhile, in the residential area of Jiangcheng brand complex, Sun Jai, felt someone entering her home. Quickly, there was a sound of breaking in from outside, entering the house. This is the house. Find her quickly. Beautiful lady, hide well in the house. Don't let me find you too easily, or I'll kill you. A moment later, they stood in front of Yi Cheng's room. She's here. Miss, come out quickly. I'll give you a painless death. Another person spoke up. No, no, no. Don't listen to him. I will torture her slowly. The leader behind them intervened. No killing. I can't contact Mr. Mio. Perhaps the situation has changed. Keeping her alive might be useful, and we can have some fun with her. Hey, beautiful, I'm here. One of them stepped forward, delivering a strike to the door with a loud bang. Inside the room, Sun Jai thought the wooden door would easily be shattered by them. However, after just one strike, not only did the door not break, but it also emitted a strange blue light. She had no idea what Yi Chang had done to the door. Outside, there was a voice filled with astonishment. How could my strike not do anything to the door? The surrounding men were equally astonished. Is there some hidden force in this door? At that moment, a green flame appeared on the arm of the one who had struck the door, and an intense heat rapidly spread across his body. The flames revealed the image of a demonic and eerie head. He screamed in agony before collapsing on the ground instilling fear in the remaining men. He's dead. I don't know what's on this door, but it seems we can't directly destroy it with force. If we attack forcefully, we might be devoured by the evil spirit on the door. Perhaps the person Mr. Mayo wants us to kill this time is not ordinary. They exchanged glances for a moment. One of them spoke up. Give me 20 seconds. After saying that, he took out a lock-picking tool. Inside the room, Sun Jai was terrified. Hearing the groans from earlier, she knew that one of them had died. Suddenly, the doorknob moved, making a sound as it turned. Beautiful lady, I've arrived. The masked man pushed the door open. His eyes filled with desire as he looked at Sun Jai. Truly beautiful. Just for you, we lost a brother. You have to compensate us. Sun Jai, frightened, pleaded, please don't come over here. A nearby man reminded, don't go too far. Make sure she stays alive. They approached Sun Jai. At this moment, Sun Jai remembered Yi Chang's words, that he would come to save her as long as she stayed alive. Yi Chang, where are you now? Suddenly, a whooshing sound came from the window. A knife darted in, directly stabbing the head of the assassin. He fell dead on the spot. At the window, the sound echoed as someone appeared. Those from Jiang Nan Wang dare to interfere. Indeed, they seek death. Witnessing their comrades' deaths without a chance to react, they were suddenly struck with fear. Furthermore, the horror escalated upon hearing the three words, Jiang Man Wan. No matter who you are, you're just an assassin. When it comes to martial arts, you're not necessarily skilled. Before finishing the words, someone from behind thrust a knife into his head. Everything happened rapidly, and the remaining person couldn't react in time. He knew about Jiang Nan Wan but he didn't know why this person was associated with Jiang Man Wang. According to rumors, offending the six leading clans in the South was better than offending Jiang Man Wang. 
He knelt down to surrender, but it was too late as a cold steel blade swung towards him, causing his immediate demise. Sun Jai was still in shock, only realizing that she had been rescued. At this moment, two individuals from Jiang Nan Wang approached Sun Jai, bowing their heads and saying, Miss Sun, don't worry, we are associates of Mr. Yi. Sun Jai now only felt surprise, wondering, what kind of person is Yi Cheng? Meanwhile, at the Tandang Mountain, a cemetery filled with tombstones painted a desolate picture. A figure was dragging something up the stairs. Upon closer inspection, it was Yi Cheng, carrying the lifeless body of Mio Jin Gu. He traversed through rows of tombstones, eventually stopping in front of the graves of his parents and himself. Today is the anniversary of my parents' death, and I have a gift for both of you, he muttered. Facing the tombstones of his parents, Yi Cheng tossed Mio Jin Gu to the ground, causing him to roll in front of their graves. Kneel down for me, Yi Cheng commanded. Mio Jin Gu, a martial arts master, couldn't bear this humiliation. I am a subordinate of the Long family. I cannot kneel before ordinary people, he retorted. Mio Jin Gu glared at Yi Cheng and declared, If you are skilled, then kill me. Without hesitation, Yi Cheng reached out and seized Mio Jin Gu's head. I told you to bow down, he uttered. As he spoke, he pressed down on Mio Jin Gu's head, and immediately, blood spilled as his head detached. Yi Cheng proceeded to decapitate Mio Jin Gu ten times, then twenty times, until there was no sign of life left in him. Di Cheng's expression turned cold. Now is the time for retribution, he declared. Raising his hand, a condensed aura, like a sharp blade, slashed towards Mio Jin Gu, and his head fell to the ground. Yi Cheng placed Mio Jin Gu's head before the gravestone of his parents. Mom, Dad, this Mio Jin Gu is the first one to pay for his sins on your behalf. Don't worry, this is just the beginning. I, Yi Cheng, swear that everyone involved with the Van Ho Mansion five years ago, including the man in the capital, will be sent to hell to atone for their sins by these very hands. The next morning, Sun Jai also arrived at the Tandang Mountain. Walking and pondering, she thought, a lot happened last night, and that Yi Cheng guy is becoming more unpredictable. Initially, I thought he was just a rogue. If he didn't resemble my deceased schoolmate, I wouldn't have kept him around. As Sun Jai approached the Yi family's grave, she was startled to see Yi Cheng, who was drunk, leaning against the tombstone. This act stirred her emotions. Fundamentally, Yi Cheng shouldn't be present in this place. But now, there was only one possibility. Yi Cheng is Yi Shen. I should have figured it out earlier. How else could he always be by my side, protecting me? and helping me with everything. Only he would do that for me. Why didn't I realize it sooner? I'm so foolish. Sun Jai embraced Yi Cheng with a sense of heartache. I can't imagine what you've been through in these past five years, leading to such a profound change in you. But from now on, you don't have to endure those things alone anymore. Standing before the gravestone, Sun Jai spoke up. It's been a long time, uncle. I never thought this year Yi Shen would return. Uncle, don't worry. I will take care of him and make sure he doesn't cause trouble. He's well behaved now, and as he grows up, he will become a good man. While Sun Jai was speaking, Yi Cheng opened his eyes. Seeing Sun Jai, he asked, What are you doing? Yi Cheng casually took a sip from a wine flask, and Sun Jai spoke up, Are you still drinking? Let's go home. You reek of alcohol. You drank all night. Now it's time to go home. Take a shower and rest. I promised your parents that I would take care of you. Yi Cheng asked Sun Jai, Are you planning to be my parents' daughter-in-law? Sun Jai cheerfully replied, I will play the role of your parents' daughter-in-law until you find a wife. Now let's go home. Yi Cheng, looking at his parents' gravestone, thought silently, This is the scene my parents would most like to see. Yi Cheng and Sun Jai headed home. Later on Tain Lang Mountain, a woman appeared. She was Sai Shai Ran. She had continuously experienced nightmares last night and coincidentally ended up here. She suddenly noticed a cloth bag on the grave, surprised that someone was visiting the Yi family. The bag seemed peculiar, and with courage, she opened it. Sai Shai Ran found a head inside the bag. Instinctively, she stepped back, her body trembling, eyes filled with fear, not from the horror, but because she recognized the person. This is Mio Jin Gu, a martial arts master. I can't believe someone killed him and placed his severed head on the Yi family grave.
She instructed investigators to check all the cemetery cameras to see who had visited the Yi family grave. Shifting scenes to the urban area, a knocking sound roused Yi Chang from his sleep. My head really hurts, I drank too much yesterday, he groaned. Glancing over, Yi Chang saw Sun Jai waking up as well. Sun Jai, why are you sleeping in my bed? Yi Chang chuckled. Sun Jai, you finally crave my body. Sun Jai, infuriated, scolded. I crave your head, not you. You're the worst drunkard, insisting on hugging me to sleep, practically impossible to escape. I still reek of alcohol from you. I'm not your temporary wife. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you.